This is the eLearn podcast, episode number 79. The point here is um, that they get motivated because they work on a real challenge. And that's mm. the, yeah, that's the social commitment that we have. It's basically a democratization of education also. Mm -hmm. So the training are for free for NGO partners. We partner with NGO and yeah. they uh, present a challenge. And that challenge is the one we use uh, to learn Welcome to the eLearn Podcast. My name is Ladik, and I'm your host from OpenLMS. My guest for today is Estefania Fernandez, a serial educational entrepreneur, a youth leader, and a polyglot, originally from Spain. After relocating to Berlin, Estefania created her Business Model Republic meetup group to connect with others. This group exploded to more than 6,000 members and became an obvious launching point for her latest venture, which is called eBloom. eBloom is an international community where young business graduates gain skills by participating in social innovation projects. I'm sure you're going to be energized listening to this very lively conversation where Estefania and I talk about the origin of a simple but powerful idea match young graduates looking for experience with NGOs needing help with innovative solutions to social problems, finding the value in both agile methodologies and empathy along the way. We also talk about why social innovation is the perfect playground for professionals to put years of project management and innovation theory to the test. You should definitely stay tuned for some of Estefania's favorite campaigns. We also talk about making value consistent with both business and social innovation and the value of community to ensure sustainable outcomes. We also talk about why Estefania believes in learning by helping and the many lessons she's drawn from the intense startup communities across Europe. And then finally, Estefania explains how you can join as a graduate, a volunteer, an NGO looking for support, a facilitator, or even a school or university interested in adding a practical and empathetic element to your learning plan. As a final note, for longtime listeners and newbies alike, you'll notice that we're trying out a new format where we record these conversations live. So you may hear me ask for your interaction as we go along. Even though this is a recording right now, you can still participate. Just head over to LinkedIn or Facebook or YouTube and search for this episode and place your questions in the comments or chat. We'd love to hear from you and we do answer every question. Now, finally, before we get started, a quick word from our sponsors. The eLearning Podcast is sponsored by the eLearn Success Series, a uniquely valuable set of events that bring together sector experts and thought leaders to offer solutions to the most critical challenges and issues at the intersection of education and technology. Get your free ticket to all four sessions at eLearnSuccessSeries.com. And Open LMS a company that provides world-class LMS solutions that empower organizations to meet education and workplace learning needs. Learn more by visiting openlms.net. All right. Welcome to the e-learning hot seat from lmspulse.com, from OpenLMS, and the e-learn podcast. Excellent. My name is Ladek. Uh, welcome to you this morning. Uh, we're here bright and early, 10 a.m. I guess you know, for people who like are stock traders and stuff, like we're we're already like they're like three hours in, but um, it's 10 a.m. here on the east coast of the United States on February 3rd. And my guest is Estefania Fernandez, who is the founder of eBloom, which I'm excited to dive into. You know what eBloom is, how we got there, you know your journey into this online learning space, this e-learning space, and this community platform really that you have put together that I, I think has some really interesting potential and has a really fantastic goal. Uh, before we go down that path though, Stephanie, why don't you take 30 seconds and just introduce yourself and tell us about who you are. Okay. Thank you for having me. Um, my name is Stefania. I'm from Spain, but I live in Berlin. So right now it's 4 p.m. here. It's almost dark. <laughs> and um, uh, so my journey started as an entrepreneur, actually, that's my background and in the travel industry. So um, I, um, my, my journey is basically from entrepreneurship to innovation and in between innovation, it came with consultancy and education. Mm -hmm. So I'm working as a lecturer. Yeah, I, I was working in normal business schools, private business schools here in Germany and in Spain. And uh, the e-learning came as an idea. 
and uh, it was also looking for solving specific problems that I was seeing in these uh, schools. Uh, on one hand, there was like a pandemic and it was like we had to move everything to uh, online courses. And some of my colleagues, uh, like a very academic, that, that have like, you know, they, they just, it was a bit more complicated to jump into all the digital, <laughs> all the digitals. And, and for me, I was used to that because I also have a meetup group. Mm -hmm. And I create events every month about business model innovation. So I was already used for uh, creating workshops using Miro Mural with collaborative, to collaborative tools and, uh, you know, virtual whiteboards while also organizing online events, etc. So it was a bit of, you know, like that, the lack of, um, you know, uh, digital tools or digitization in, in the schools and universities. And uh, on the other hand, also a bit of obsolete content in mm -hmm. terms of, for example, I'm teaching project management and not everywhere they include agile methodologies, for example, in their, uh, in their module specifications, learning outcomes of uh, the, uh, basically of the modules. And, and nowadays, I mean, like who, you know, it's like we we need to learn this. We we really have to get used also to be prepared for the new way of work too. Mm. Especially when there are so many people working remotely. Of course, yeah. we need to be more agile, etc. Same with uh, this um, with innovation. We were learning a bit of design thinking, uh, but yeah, I just wanted to make it more collaborative. So. The idea of Ebloom comes from that point. And it was a matter of like experimentation, to be honest. Uh, so I started experimenting with my students. So I invited them. I gave them a so presentation. This, so this, the, we did the whole, the, the whole thing began with, with, as a part of your lecturing, as part of your professorship. Uh, well, it was kind of a site. It was not really in the university. It was a site, like playing with this idea. Mm -hmm. So I presented the idea to the students. They liked it, and then we uh, invited them for free to attend my courses. So I prepared like a storyline from like uh, this uh, from why innovation matters, design thinking. We did a live uh, workshop, design thinking workshop. They all collaborated. The point here is um, that they get motivated because they work on a real challenge. And that's mm. the, yeah, that's the social commitment that we have. It's basically a democratization of education also. Mm -hmm. So the training are for free for NGO partners. We partner with NGO and they get the uh, online courses for free with a code. It's easy on online mm -hmm. e-learning. And yeah. they uh, present a challenge, and that challenge is the one we use uh, to learn the theoretical concepts into the practice. We take it in a, a real, uh, we take the, the example, you know, like the real challenge from the NGO. We work on, on the challenge. The winner idea, it, it goes to a project management process. That's no, why cool. we always learn. So first we learn the innovation tools. We do it. We, we choose the idea. And then the, the team can learn like the story, the, the background of uh, agile methodologies. And then we learn a scrum. And they have to do the project in one sprint. And we with this, we do the, we of course, we use the uh, platform, uh, mm -hmm. the learning platform, digital tool uh so like uh, the the whiteboard the virtual whiteboard and in this case we're using nova tools okay and uh and then the slack community so okay. the, we do like we have a channel uh we can make it private so that people can keep sure, talking on the slack and that's it yeah so but so we got a great overview there um before we uh, before i take a next step and ask it you know, ask you a question um, I want to remind everybody that we are live right now with Stephanie. If you do have a question um, and you're watching on LinkedIn or Facebook or, or YouTube, please put it in the chat there. Uh, we do see the comments and we'd love to interact with you. Uh, you know, it could be a, a question. It could be an observation. It could be a challenge. You could put your own story in, in the comments as well. And we'd love to you know share those stories as well. Um, I also want to just give a shout out to, you know, 
this type of story, this type of conversation, this type of you know continued evolution and pushing towards the future of where e-learning is going is going to be discussed at our e-learning success summit right here. Oh, I guess they can't see it. Oh, sorry. And our uh, you know the the e-learn success series is a series of four events that are happening over over the year here in 2022. Our first session, which is the design session, uh, is happening on February 23rd. Um, all of the tickets are free. And so go over to elearnsuccessseries.com and, and grab your ticket right now. Um, Stephanie, so I'm really interested in, in a very specific question. So this started as a way for you to present these challenges for to your graduate students to, to actually have, you know, uh, real tangible problems to work on. And you, you partner with NGOs in order to help them solve problems. Right. So it's lifting all boats, as we say. What can you give me like one or two examples of like very specific challenges that the NGOs are putting on the table for you? And where are they located? Are these all European? Are these all German? Or like where are these NGOs located? Are they global or what? Uh, think about the uh, Ibloom is founded in uh, on the 15th of July officially of last year. So it's okay. quite, quite fresh. Uh -huh. So it's uh, so this is I, I have an example here. That's a coffee, reusable coffee mug. Okay, yeah. Uh, that comes from a live workshop we did with a, an NGO from Nigeria. So that already yeah. solves uh, one of the questions. It's like, no, it doesn't need, it's a learning. So we can be anywhere. Sure. Mm -hmm. so every, every NGO is welcome. And actually, we're looking for more partners uh, to help more people and uh, they can go and write me directly i will send them a voucher and they they will present a challenge and we will work on it so this is an example with this um, design thinking workshop by the way in the workshop the student can be a team member or a facilitator that's mm. the way they gain confidence they expose themselves by doing it mm -hmm. and those who want to be a team member only and not a facilitator they receive a link which is a type form basically to give constructive feedback to the facilitator and the facilitator uh, receives a specific training to lead a workshop in the nova tools in the tool we can even implement uh, videos so the every step of the design thinking process is explained and there is like a time box etc it's everything set and the, the participants, they just, of course, they play with the post-its, they bring their ideas, then we select the idea. In this case, that was uh, Coffee for Edu. That was hashtag Coffee for Edu. Okay. And um, that was basically people could donate one euro. The, the challenge was how can we create a more creative fundraising, fundraising campaign for Back to School Africa? Okay. Back to School Africa is supporting kids that are out of school in Nigeria because in Nigeria, uh, the fees for school, they cost 40 euro mm -hmm. and the average salary, uh, it's 50 euro. So mm -hmm. let's say that there is like a monoparental family with different, with, uh, you know, few kids. It's quite challenging. Yeah, for sure. Is that a and, is, that, is that per month? I assume is is it forty euros per month usually? No, no, no. Uh, forty euro per year. Okay, all right. But mm -hmm. it's still it's, it's quite challenging for a family. So there are many schools that are out of school, and that was the challenge. So how can we create a more creative uh, fundraising campaign, creating awareness of this problem, mm -hmm. uh, without first asking for data mm -hmm. or just asking for money because every every NGO is asking for money, right? So why should I give you money? It's also like NGOs should be a bit more innovative too, like businesses, huh? So it's like mm -hmm. it's like a lot of competition. How how can we be, be a bit more creative? So the, the coffee for it was the winner idea. And here was like people can donate one more euro in this case, because mm -hmm. we're in Europe, uh, for every coffee they drink, but it was a bit co complicated in terms of logistics, etc. So then from one idea, you know, you connect dots. And at the end, it was like, why don't we uh, actually create reusable coffee mugs that nowadays we're getting rid of all plastics, etc. And uh, one use stuff. Why don't we create a 
basically a reusable coffee cup and we sell it and with this margin the money goes directly to the ngo directly to uh the kids in nigeria so mm. we did this prototype this is the prototype it's uh, it's not uh it looks like plastic but it's not it's recycled plastic but it, because it's the mvp and we just presented it actually last week in the street with uh, some music etc so it was a lot of fun seeing everyone involved and Ooh. the acceptance was very nice, even mm -hmm. though it was very cold in Berlin that day. <laughs> <laughs> I have to say we suffer a bit for three hours outside. Um, but yeah, and and uh, we're very happy about this. And my role here is I help them to launch the project. Now it's up to them. Sure. Uh, sure. That, that's Go the on. point, no? Uh, yeah. the, the idea is basically that they have also a more sustainable way of generating money and the objective for this year for this ngo is uh paying the fees for 250 children in nigeria wow it's a nice yeah. goal fantastic well, let's see so take me then to to the ebloom platform and you know how i would you know anybody who's listening here how would i interact with it is it do i come in and i'm uh looking to upskill myself do I bring my organization and I'm looking to upscale my organization and staff in my organization? Um, like just it, it, walk me through, like, how do I interact? Like, what am I, what do I use eBloom for? So eBloom is for uh, learning innovation, basically. So mm -hmm. it's more oriented to business graduates, actually. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, Jen said they're looking for purpose and also they want to, they need to gain experience and they need to gain confidence. That's the main thing. That's why we create these open spaces with the um, uh, live workshops. We also have live events uh, every fourth Wednesday of the month where they mm -hmm. can just present and practice their pitches. Uh, if they have, for example, a business idea. And the, then we have also the Slack community. So it's meant for that. At the, begin, at the moment, we're at the really beginning. So um, we have a specific courses and we're working lean. And actually, we're looking for more collaborators too. And because we need more content. That's the mm -hmm. main thing. But it's focusing two specific models, social innovation, which is this first one, which is already you know done. And the next one will be, it's not uh, totally ready, is uh, entrepreneurship. Social entrepreneurship goes from where the good ideas come from till the pitch. Mm. So, But of course, there's like a lot of processes a lot of steps in between while you're creating a business so um that's uh that's the thing and how you can register online on the website uh there is a free trial because mm -hmm. as i said we're, we're we're starting so there is a free trial and we are basically working on more projects today actually i'm meeting some uh, new students coming from minerva university actually from the states and they're going from, to run from, from which university minerva university where is that i don't know that one and uh, so it's in san francisco but they they travel every um yeah they do like six months uh in seoul six months in uh -huh. berlin etc and berlin is the that's why I'm here. Berlin is the epicenter of startups in Europe too. Okay. So mm -hmm. there are like few universities in uh, like this. They are traveling and they spend six months here. For example, there is one from Spain also is Montagon Team Academy, MTA. They do the same concept. Uh, they spend four years of the bachelor. They spend six months in Pune, India, six months in Seoul, six months in Berlin six months in LA and I can't remember what it's like. Uh, I mean, I I'm so jealous when I see that. Yeah, because... It sounds like a really mind blowing experience. I wish that was something I could both afford and was yeah. accepted into, you know, when I did my magic, my graduate degrees, but <laughs> regardless. Yeah. So well, here's my question about, so eBloom, that, so this online learning platform as the founder of this, as the creator of this, what were your, what were your biggest challenges in getting the platform up and running? There's a lot of, you know, ed tech and education entrepreneurs out there who much like you say, look, I've got a great idea. It could be as simple as putting my course online, or it could be, I have this whole ecosystem I want to create much like eBloom. 
um, I'd love to learn about what are some of those, you know, the, the most important challenges that you faced uh, when oh. you were considering about how do I, how do I even put this platform together? Was just, uh, let me stop there and just what, what first comes to mind for you? Okay. Several things, but a first thing was thinking about the whole process. How will that work? How will that be different than any other you know, e-learning academy in the market mm. because there are so many, there are so many options for, I mean, you can learn on YouTube. Also, sure. why should you pay? You know, like people mm. won't pay because, um, I mean, we, we learn a lot on uh, like free content out there. So the difference was like creating all this more, much more complex mm -hmm. uh, process, which is not one online course, but it's an e-learning experience with a social impact. So kind of like generating the whole idea. I spent a lot of time on the beach thinking about it. In my office, working really, really hard, you know, like modeling and whiteboards. No, it was on the beach. Actually, it was literally because I was, I started last year thinking about this and I was uh, in an island in Spain uh, Fuerteventura mm -hmm. that actually belongs to Africa. It should belong to Africa. Mm -hmm. And it's 25 degrees there in December, while in Berlin is minus 10, maybe. So better option. I was, yeah, I was there uh, working also remotely and, and thinking about this. So, yeah, I, I was mentioning on purpose this on the beach because it was literally like this. <laughs> <laughs> so okay so take us through those so first it was about how do you add value right so how do you have a value proposition that would be interesting enough because like you said it's a challenge that many people face in ed being educational entrepreneurs of there is so much free content there are so many experts out there sort of giving away their not giving away but providing their knowledge and expertise for free right through youtube or those okay. kinds of things um, and what was, so what was the, that, what was ultimately the thing that you landed on that you think is that value proposition? Is it connecting to NGOs? Is it the community? Is it the experience? Is it a certificate? Like, what is it that people or students get out of it that say, yeah, I, I'm going to give you my $25 or euros or whatever it is. Yeah. Uh, so that's something I call learning by helping. Mm -hmm. So it's something like learning by doing, obviously, but it's like, okay, you, you are actually taking action but with a social impact so that's i think that's that's the main value proposition that you are actually taking action while you're helping you know someone mm. like in this case uh, an organization and and while doing this you are gaining practice so um yeah the opportunity also of uh being an, an a facilitator that's also something I, I did study uh, my, my, for example, my, my executive MBA, and I did a lot of training, obviously, in these topics. And uh, there was also like, uh, I mean, this, this training in innovation, they are normally quite pricey, mm -hmm. but also you don't find there many opportunities to expose yourself to be the facilitator when you want to gain the practice. Mm -hmm. And uh, how did I do it? Uh, well, I I created my my meetup group uh, okay. more than five years ago. So I was like exposing no, myself. Now yeah. this is okay. So this is the the story behind the story, right? So I'm, ah, glad, yeah. I'm glad that we got there. It's great, excellent. So what's first of all for everybody who doesn't know, what is a meetup group like? I mean, literally, obviously, people come and meet up. They meet together. But was this on Meetup.com or whatever? Like, like literally. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's uh, basically what happened. Uh, a successful meetup community. Okay. Uh, yeah, actually, my community has now like uh, more than 6,000 members. Uh -huh. And I started in 2016. And the reason why I started, it was like no plan, no strategy, nothing. It was more like I was in Berlin uh, learning from the ecosystem, startup ecosystem, etc. So I was attending two different events and there was one that is called Put Your Idea Under Pressure. Mm -hmm. Okay. And uh, that uh, meetup is led by Christoph Radke, 
who is actually a business angel, is he's one of the most popular persons in Germany in this mm, okay. startup environment. And um, so you go to this event and it, you pitch your idea. And 99% of the times, Christoph tells you, uh, quit now. Ah! <laughs> sure. <laughs> because uh -huh. that's not going to, you know, like he's very knowledgeable because he's been in this, uh, you know, working with the startups for so many years that he, uh, I mean, he gives you the reasons of obviously, and he puts you in contact with other people. So you can also check etc what is wrong about your idea after one of those events i recognized that not everyone was there for pitching it was um, you know people were there to meet other people and to listen to other people's mm -hmm. ideas and then they were coming to you if you're in the same industry etc so i asked him like christoph your event is very cool but poor people <laughs> sometimes <laughs> you know um i think some ideas could work if you use innovation technology, also innovation frameworks, innovation methodologies. And then I asked him, is there any event like this where, you know, people can come with an idea, but we all work on this idea. So the entrepreneur gets the feedback and who knows, maybe some kind of synergies happen. And then you find that even a co-founder, like I was dreaming already, you know, finding co-founders like this way, et cetera. And so he said, like, oh, you can you can organize it. Here you have the space. The venue is uh, the German is called GTEC, the German Technological Entrepreneurship Center in Berlin. And I was like, okay. So I did uh, my first event, uh, and it was design thinking workshop for entrepreneurs because that was the main idea. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, two months after, I created the meetup on meetup.com. Uh, we had 300 members wow and i was like okay that seems that it's interesting for the people mm -hmm. so um the name now is uh, business model republic dot com business and, model. <laughs> nice. yes because that was more than five years ago and mm -hmm. we are not doing all the time design thinking that will be boring so we started with design thinking, then uh, design sprints came. Then we had we have monthly events about agile, um, I, basically uh, agile frameworks like OKRs, Scrum, whatever. Then we also have alternatives to the uh, current economy. We had uh, meetups about the purpose economy, for example, or uh, the you know the donut economy, or um, more into in terms of sustainability we also invited um you know like great inspiring founders of uh, environmental startups etc so that's um that's all related no it's, uh, and that's the four main blocks of ebloom mm, uh absolutely. entrepreneurship innovation sustainability and agile awesome fantastic yeah. and so what was the moment that you knew that you know, this e from this community that you created, this meetup community, what was the moment that you said, look, I need to have a platform for this. I need good, you know, cause it's, a, it's a huge investment of your time. It's a huge investment of your energy. And you, know, you make a choice about where to take your, your own personal life, your own personal career. And so what, what was that moment where you said, yeah, this, this, had, I, this idea has enough energy, has enough cachet, has enough interest that I'm going to invest in, building out a platform and taking it online and, and using, doing that. Well, uh, we had a pandemic, <laughs> so, you ah. know, it's like a lockdown. It was a lockdown. Uh, you can't do anything at all. Uh -huh. And here it's also in Berlin is especially cold. So, um, after my time on the beach, I had to go back to, <laughs> to my house in Berlin. <laughs> yeah. I was like, okay, this, this is the, the investment of the year. Uh -huh. And, um, so I started, uh, actually, I bought one of those online courses, like create your online academy. Really? I, it was, I, it was, I, it was I, a course that you bought it. Nice. And you're like, how do I, I create an academy? Yeah, I, I watch a lot of YouTube videos at the beginning and everything. So, uh, yeah, I had to choose the tools I wanted to use. but mm -hmm. And I wanted to, I was curious to learn also more about uh, web development, etc. So I did 
the work uh, the WordPress. I, I I just use a WordPress. Okay. And you know WordPress and plugins. I mean, it's not that complicated. I, love, it I, really how, takes I love how you just kind of shrug your shoulders. Whatever. I just set up a WordPress site and some plugins, and boom, it was done. I mean, for many of the people who, especially you know, so our you know many of the educators out there, as you said earlier, they are. You know, they've built whole careers about be, around being educators, and so what the pandemic has put on their their plate right now is now you also have to be you know uh, able to do video. You know, you got to be kind of a TV star. You also have to do great audio. You've got to you know be a designer. You design thinking, and now you're saying, hey, look, there's this entrepreneurial stuff, and oh, by, by the way, there's all this technology. Um, what did what so like tell me about that like when you said you know hey i threw a wordpress site together uh, you know with some plugins i'm i'm lucky enough to be that you know digitally savvy that that's what i've done for my life but is there any advice that you threw out there for other education entrepreneurs about getting started with this or you know uh you know being high somewhat <laughs> hey, just lots, lots of coffee and late nights or what is like like how like what's your advice for overcoming some <laughs> barriers uh, no, I was kidding, but I was going to mention like hire someone to do it for you. <laughs> yeah, okay. No, I to say for sure. No, it, it's. I mean, uh, it's been a lot of work. I have to say, I have to admit that I subestimated the like, work. Mm. I yeah, I was thinking like yeah, I can do that. Like the WordPress, I mean, plugins. But then I suffer while I was doing it, really. And uh, eventually, I also got a bit of help, technical help, because I was getting a bit crazy or frustrated with some stuff. Um, but when I decided to do this, it was also uh, I wanted to learn about that because mm. my point, my whole point was also like, now I have this year to do it. So it was like, I'm going to set up the basis. And if it doesn't work, that was my my thought if it doesn't work i i just gain i gained experience because i was not risking that much mm -hmm. and I, I and my thought was like and if i have to also like look for a job uh i i basically have a knowledge that every company will need eventually because every single company needs to upskill their employees etc Absolutely. And they they need also like the knowledge of the LMS and and that's uh, that was the whole idea. So if someone wants to do it, yeah, um, be patient and, <laughs> ask, and <for> help. <laughs> yeah, ask for help. Really, because um, you can there's so there is there are so many options out there that you can get crazy to choose only mm -hmm. before you take any action. No? like the research will already take you ages because there are so many tools out there and yeah. then you have to decide what is best for you and mm -hmm. that will take that will take already a lot of time fantastic i'm going to pause there for a second i want to remind everybody i'm here with stephanie fernandez and we are live in the e-learn hot seat uh this is you know if, if you have a question for stephanie if you know if you are an education entrepreneur if you are someone who is considering you know building a master class, putting your course online, whatever, you know, this is a great moment to put those questions in the comments. If you're in LinkedIn or you're in Facebook or, or YouTube, we do see the comments and we'd love to have that discussion with you. I also want to just give a shout out. I saw um, Richard Hall just a few minutes ago. He just said, good afternoon and have a great day. Um, and I just want to acknowledge that comment. Thanks so much, Richard. We would love to have, we, well, same to you. I hope that you'll stay safe and strong with all your friends and family as well. Stephanie. Yes. Where is eBloom at now? Like what, if you look forward for the next six months to 12 months, you have this platform, you're already doing projects, you're connecting graduate students with these cool opportunities with NGOs. Um, you know, if you, what are you, what are your sort of your next immediate next steps to, to continue to grow the platform, to refine it, to make it better? So, yes. Um, first we need more collaborators. We need more partners. So, Feel free to contact me Absolutely. if anyone is interested. And uh, so we are right now in the process of uh, content creation. That's the most important now because we have uh, the process, but we really need to like finish these two first modules because uh, at the moment it's been like only me. 
-hmm. and it's basically it was not that long so um that's the main thing and mm -hmm. of course uh, we have we are now also getting more uh, people in the team because we have also some students participating, etc. We have also uh, co partnerships with uh, uh, programs like U for Impact. Uh, they, they're, it's very nice and uh, very interesting the amount of things going on uh, going on nowadays. Also, uh, very interesting projects like these ones, uh, like the Social uh, Entrepreneurship Incubator. They are based in Singapore, and this, for example, you for Impact in Spain, or there is another association called or, well, organization called On Purpose. They mm -hmm. are based in Paris, and they they are organizations that match uh, students with uh, social companies so mm -hmm. um we got in touch also and there are a few students creating already the the next events the next workshops etc etc and they they gain uh credits for their uh oh, studies. Nice. Mm -hmm. Even so that's the whole thing. yeah because they work on something with purpose actually <laughs> again mm -hmm. and and they get credits so that's the whole idea no and i that's um that's why I also create Tribloom because I think that the education system has to be more collaborative and more uh, interactive. Fantastic. What if I'm if I'm a student listening and a graduate student, do I have to bring a, a whole class with me in order to do something like this, or do I sign up individually and then I'm paired with the project and I, you know, I can work on a yeah. project that way? So individually, it's uh, totally fine because the point is that you can meet people here too mm. and um so and the e-learning you can do it uh, however you want we have an app by the way mm -hmm. and uh, the the whole idea is that you can also listen to the to the course without you know being all the time in front of the computer well, that uh, uh, so honestly everyone is quite fed up of <laughs> being on front of the computer all the time nowadays so the the point is also that you can go you know, for a walk, or you can be like, you know, you can listen to a, a course while cooking. Yeah. Mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. the design um, is uh, meant to be also for only audio. Yeah, that was also the the idea. And and then in the live workshop, the people apply. Uh, so there is an application. No? So like, if you go to the website uh, on live workshops, you should apply uh, to participate in the workshop why because first you have to you know have done the the theoretical uh you know you have to you have had to learn the the theoretical concepts in order mm -hmm. to participate in the workshop so you're not coming with like zero knowledge uh so that's the thing and then it's when in this application is when you ask i want to be a facilitator or i want to be a team member so that's the whole point and in the workshop, you will meet other people, and then you can keep in contact with the Slack. Fantastic! Yeah. I, I I love it. I mean, we're big fans of, of using Slack as a community tool, but also you know in our community as well. Uh, uh, it's just really interesting to see what people are interested in, and what are some of the hottest topics in your in your Slack community? Like what what bubbles to the top? Is it here's my idea? You know, what do people think? You know, give me feedback on my idea, or is it? You know, how do I find job opportunities or what 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 are the, the top things that your community is talking about? Actually, the job opportunities is something obviously students want to have. Sure. And I, at the beginning, I was like, okay, I can't do that because I can't do everything and I can't really look for, you know, like no. all the like, but we have a channel for job opportunities okay. because um we partner also with a couple of uh companies. Mm -hmm. Like uh, German tech jobs, for example, they are looking for, you know, uh, basically graduates and so on. So they were happy to join and to post from time to time some posts uh, about like jobs. I do sometimes whenever I see something interesting in the community about like innovation and so on, I also share it. But yeah, as I said, at, at the beginning, it's, uh, you know, like it's a bit harder, like there's like not so much interaction, but we're getting there. And the 
uh, Slack is used mainly also for the private channels, also the tool, sure. like uh, the teams that work in the projects. Fantastic. Yeah. Stephanie, this has been a fantastic conversation about eBlue and your entrepreneurial journey, your educational entrepreneurial journey. I love this. Um, final question for you. I'd like to wrap this up is, what are you, you know, what are you personally looking forward to most? Is there, you know, you know, finishing up the courses? Is it a new piece of technology? Is it, you know, getting out of your house and meeting people, doing meetup, you know, doing meetups in person again? Like what's, you know, over the next six months, you know, in, in 2022, what are, you, what are you most excited about? Uh, it will be awesome to do what I call a bloom camp. Ooh. Uh, uh, that would be awesome. And I already have, well, that's why I was in the Canary Island because uh, it's very, you know, very interesting for someone from North Europe to go to the South and mm -hmm. enjoy. So we, um, the reason I was there, I was also collaborating with a digital community. Uh -huh. And as I said, last year I was there and it would, everyone was coming from North Europe to the Canary Island. And it was funny because I met someone there, a Berliner. And I told him, like, I have this idea of the e-learning academy. I will build a Slack community for people to interact. And he was like, oh, that's interesting. Let's build a Slack community for the digital nomads here. And it's like a huge success now. It's like amazing. Wow. And I went there because I, one of my friends, he has two hotels. And he started. we started uh, checking the option to transform the hotel also to digital nomads. Mm -hmm. So it's a, it's called Surfing Colors. It's a hotel for surface, and there is like a surface school, and now there is a co-living and a co-working. And it's funny. I told him because in the corridor there are this uh, there is this message: "See you in the next wave." For uh, yeah. And, and is, like, this, is this in Tenerife or where is this? In uh, Fuerteventura. No, Fuerteventura. Yeah, okay. it was like very appropriate uh, these days. <laughs> yeah. So in the, yeah next year I would like to definitely do something like like that where we can meet also in person, etc. But yeah, I I want to have like the whole process, the website. Of course, I want to improve it and the whole content and so on, that the message is more clear and we become obviously more popular. Fantastic. Yeah. Awesome. Stephanie Fernandez, thank you so much for taking time out of your, I guess, cold winter afternoon in Berlin to uh, to speak with us here on the e-learning hot seat. It's been a pleasure speaking with you about eBloom. Uh, I encourage everyone to come over and check you out. It's eBloom.net, correct? Or e-bloom.net? Yeah, exactly. Uh, we have the, Chris has put the, um, the, the website up here for people to check it out. Yeah. If you are listening to the recording of this, um, you know, please do feel free to put your comments in, you know, is in LinkedIn, in Facebook or in uh, on YouTube because we do see them. We're happy to respond to you or connect you with Estefania or, you know, whatever. And then final, final shout out is, you know, make sure that you come over and have more of these conversations. Uh, we're here every week, but um, I'm really interested in you coming over to the eLearn design session, uh, the, the, sorry, the design session at the eLearn success series. It's happening on February 23rd, which is just in 20 days. Uh, we're gonna, okay. you know, we've got, we've got some fantastic speakers, um, and it's entirely free. All you have to do is go to elearnsuccessseries.com and sign up, and uh, you will have access to the entire day of talks. Stephanie, thank you once again. Thank Wish you. All the luck, and we'll we'll look forward to hearing from about eBloom in the future. Yeah, thank you very much, and uh, have a nice day. Thanks again for tuning into today's episode of the eLearning Podcast. If you like what you heard please do me the favor of following us on LinkedIn, Twitter, or whichever social media you prefer. Also, if you're interested in diving deeper on e-learning, I encourage you to get your free ticket to the e-learning success summit, where there are more than 70 hours of presentations on best practices. Just go to elearningsuccesssummit.com. And then finally, for the latest news, information, and resources about e-learning, come subscribe to our newsletter at lmspulse.com. Thanks.